Ansonia, this 5th day of August, 1862. <gasps> That's his writing, I bet, right? That's his signature. Wow. That's his very signature. Robert Martindale. That is absolutely fantastic. This soldier has gray eyes, brown hair, dark complexion, is five feet five inches tall. And so we know a, a, a lot more about him than we did. Absolutely. We know a little bit what he looked like. It's a lot to um, take in. Wow. Matthew Broderick's search into his father's side of the family has brought him to Connecticut. There's a Robert Martindale. He's my great-great-grandfather. He's found Robert Martindale in the 1850 census, but after that, Robert disappears from the records. If he was placed in the 1860 census, he'd be about 37. In so we're getting into the a, a big event in 1860. Uh -oh. The Civil War, is that what we're? Exactly. Oh my god. After 40 years of intense political and economic debate, the conflict between the northern and southern states over slavery, liberty, and states' rights resulted in the secession of 11 southern states, and soon thereafter, the Civil War. In 1861, both sides expected a short, painless war, but it turned into the most devastating conflict on American soil. The fighting continued for four years, resulting in more than 600,000 deaths. We do have an index here. Individuals right. that served in the war, the Civil War, by town. J, K, L, V. Oh, I just saw it. Robert Martindale. Wow. Private Company B, 20th Regiment, Connecticut Volunteer Infantry. So what happened to him there? Well, we have some um, Civil War records here for you to look at. Oh my god. That's amazing. What are these things? These are enlistment records. Nope. Robert Martindale. 1862, that's when he went in to sign up? Yes. This is the actual document that's that the actual when he document. walked into a room somewhere and said, yeah. I want to be in the Civil War. That's the actual document. I, Robert Martindale, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America, sworn and subscribed to at Ansonia, this 5th day of August, 1862. <gasps> That's his writing, I bet, right? That's his signature. Wow. That's his very signature. Robert Martindale. That is absolutely fantastic. This soldier has gray eyes, brown hair, dark complexion, is 5 feet 5 inches tall. And so we know a, a, a lot more about him than we did. Absolutely. You know a little bit what he looked like. It's a lot to um, take in. Wow. And uh, so I am astounded that I have a relative who was in the Civil War. I'm, I'm, I'm shook up. Yeah. A lot of uh, Americans, if they were able to look back, would find they had relatives in the Civil War. But I never, for some reason, dawned on me that I was one of them. Well, I did a movie that had a Civil War uniform on. So to find that I had a great-great-grandfather in the Civil War, I, I should have thought of it, but I never did. The character I played in Glory was from a New England regiment as well, and his name was Robert, Robert Shaw. He was a colonel, and uh, apparently my grandfather was uh, just a private. So I, I imagine they had very, that's the end of their similarities. Is there a way to find out anything about his record in, during the war? There is. These are muster rolls. And mustered means gathered and gathered. counted. And exactly, exactly. So this shows the strength of a company at a given time. And it follows the regiment throughout the war, each company. So each one of these should have him in it. Correct. Let's take a peek. July to August of 63. And now are these, oh, there's Martindale. Robert okay. Martindale. So there he is. Something area. Gettysburg. Oh my God. Um, and placed in and the placed line. placed in the line of battle. Does this mean they fought in Gettysburg? He was at Gettysburg. He survived Gettysburg, more importantly. Good. In July of 1863, 
Confederate General Robert E. Lee decided to invade Northern Territory, believing a victory there would put pressure on the Union to end the war. Lee's plan brought his army to Gettysburg in South Central Pennsylvania. After three days of battle and 50,000 casualties, the Confederate army was defeated and forced to return to Virginia. The battle would prove to be a turning point in the Civil War and the future site of President Lincoln's historic Gettysburg Address. So we know they're in Gettysburg. Where are they going next? This is June 64. OK, 22nd. Join the pursuit of the enemy to within three miles of Atlanta. In, Atla in Atlanta? Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Far from home. So I could probably, if I wanted, I could find out more about that battle. And then I might find a little more detail about what kind of fighting it was. Absolutely. The muster rolls show that Robert's regiment moved through the south from Tennessee to Savannah, Georgia. But Robert's trail ends in Atlanta. I'm on my way there to meet with Gordon Jones, curator of the Atlanta History Center's Civil War exhibit. All right, Matthew. Here's where your ancestor, Robert Martindale, fought. In the Battle of Peachtree Creek, which Peach is Street on Creek. July 20th, the Federal Army continues its advance on Atlanta. And on the 23rd of July, Robert Martindale is detailed as a skirmisher. Now, a skirmisher is basically like a guard. I have a document here that will tell us what happened on July 23rd. Inventory of the effects of Robert Martindale, Company B of the 20th Regiment, Connecticut. He died on skirmish line in front of Atlanta, Georgia on the 23rd day of July, 1864, by reason of musket ball through the head. That would have been a very violent, bloody wound, but it would have been quick. Yes. It probably would have been painless. Right. And if you were going to get it, I guess that's, that's the way you wanted to have it. So that's it. That's very, um, very final. Damn, I was, I was uh, pulling for him. He had survived Gettysburg and all these horrible battles and then just took a shot in the head. It's sad, but to, to follow in my own flesh and blood's footsteps through, you know, this, this very field. It's amazing. It's, it's wonderful. What would have happened to him, to his body? I don't know that for sure. Um, almost certainly the body was recovered, but what happened after that, I don't know. But I know a guy who does. <laughs> 